Welcome back to the 2020 Kentucky Bourbon Festival, the virtual edition. I'm Steve Coombs, I'm your host. We are here to talk today about single barrels, something I call the real whiskey unicorns. I'm sure I'm not the first to say that, but uh, two of the guys here today with me in the barrel room here at Bardstown Bourbon Company are the experts on that, and we're gonna let them talk a whole lot more than I am. I'm just gonna ask questions and show my ignorance while we go along with this. But um, to my left, immediate left, I should say, is Aaron Lawrence, Global Brand Ambassador with Blanton Single Barrel. Y'all heard of that, right? <laughs> and to my far left is Grant Wheeler. He's the director of the barrel program at Jim Beam. And it's all Knob Creek at that point, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> Guys, um, like I said, I, I'm selfish in using that term about the, the real whiskey unicorns because we know what people call the unicorns. In fact, this is one of them. But a lot of times it's, it's brands that have gotten popular through reviews or you know, for whatever reason, people chase them, they want them, they hoard them, they sit on them, they might drink them, they might sell them illegally, we don't know, we won't talk about that. But really and truly, these things are one and done. When that barrel is emptied out and put into a bottle, you'll never taste that in another barrel again. So I think that's really exciting. That's part of the adventure for me. Um, I have to confess that um, you know, when I talk to people about single barrels, I don't always explain them well. They'll, they'll say, what do you mean by a store pick? What do you mean by a private pick? What is this? And you guys have two different perspectives on that. And let's make it easy and start with Blanton's, which is all single barrels all day long. That's right. Since That's 1990, right. 84. 84. That's yep. right. Yeah. 84. Yeah. Blanton's the world's first commercially produced single barrel bourbon. Elmer T. Lee's genius can be credited for that. And, and you know, he, he really took a page out of his mentor and predecessor's book, Colonel Albert Bacon Blanton. And, and so, you know, Steve, you alluded to kind of these store picks. Um, people really, really desire these bourbons. And, and I think, you know, it's the collectability of them, but also the, the real power of single barrel bourbons to me is that every single barrel that's around us right now has its own unique character and identity and and part of the fun of you know kind of the Blantons that we try today versus the Blantons that we have a couple weeks from now if they're different barrels they're going to be a little bit different from each other and so you can really really get nerdy about flavor profiles and and you know stuff like that so yeah I, would you agree Grant that um that's part of the character of the single barrels that you guys are producing absolutely i feel like i'm going to be basically repeating a lot of things that you're going to say <laughs> uh but overall that that's I'll get kind it of divided the, up yeah, yeah, here, exactly <laughs> but uh I absolutely ju basically just to touch on that i mean i mainly deal with knob creek single barrel and knob creek rye single barrel and, and to that point every single barrel is totally different so for store picks uh on and off premise uh we get bars liquor stores restaurants uh it, it, even bourbon societies, it's amazing the, the amount of growth that we've seen, but to, to Aaron's point, all the barrels that we have in here, you could have barrels basically touching each other for, 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 for Knob Creek's uh, standard, nine plus years that are gonna taste totally different. Uh, they may have the same barrel characteristics, um, maybe the same warehouse proof, uh, floor, tier, all that, but gonna taste totally different in the end. So I think that's one of the most unique and very cool things about, about single barrel. Do you think that attracts people mm -hmm. to these things? I mean, and what percentage, let's, let's say there's a million bourbon drinkers out there, what percentage really wants this unique experience barrel by barrel? Yeah, well, I'll say... Or just minority, minority or majority? I, I would say, you know, definitely if you're a, a whiskey enthusiast, you're, you're going to look for something that's different from maybe something that's produced at a, at a larger quantity. I mean, you know, the, I guess the other side of that coin is, uh, you know, if one side of the coin is the identity and the character of the barrels being different, the other side of that coin is that not every barrel can be a single barrel. Not every barrel is good enough to stand on its own. And so, you know, there's that limiting factor also that just kind of makes people want to try to add that to their collection more, I think. So maybe yeah. this is an industry secret, and I've never even thought to ask you this question. I mean, because with Blanton's, if it's in the barrel, that's a single barrel. Or are there some that just like, they don't pass muster and they get passed on to another brand at Buffalo Trace? Or? Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, so with, there is a testing for, for, for this flavor target. Yeah, mm -hmm. so so with, with Blanton specifically, we have a very, very high standard that we're looking for. It's a tasting panel made up of folks from all different aspects of the distillery. So it's, it's 
people in production, it's people that work in the warehouses, but it's also people in administration or people from the visitor center. So we get a, a really diverse range of pallets that are trying these barrel samples and they always try it against a previously bottled version of Blanton's as a constant, you know, to, to maintain that standard of quality. But, and, and it depends on the barrel, but I've heard in, in a year numbers as high as 20% being rejected. So, you know, you're looking at one in five barrels aren't making the cut and they're going into ancient age for Blanton specifically because it's the same mash bill. Um, I don't think there's any secret there, but <laughs> I, I'm sure, you know, Grant's yep. got a similar no, process. I, I, it, it, exactly, and to that point again, I, I feel like we're, we're basically gonna be repeating ourselves again, but I, <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, it, it's kind of, kind of the same drill. We, we go through a, a very quality control um, kind of background on it. We have people taste through these. Uh, for us, it's gotta pass good proof, good volume. So for Knob Creek Single Barrel, it's at least nine years old and has to be 120 proof. If it doesn't meet that 120 proof guideline, then it kind of goes back into Knob Creek Small Batch, the, the nine years old 100 proof. So that's kind of our backdrop on that. But we go through barrels that our, our QC team will, will go through and if they taste and smell and they smell an off note or something different, then they'll reject those and they won't make it. Of course, low proof barrels won't, won't make it either. But uh, I guess back to your question, uh, the kind of the minority versus majority. I feel like uh, it started off as a, a minority, not a lot of people knowing about it, but the last five to 10 years, I feel like it has definitely exploded uh, to, to get that high demand for having that own customized label. Um, so people like those store picks, they want something very unique, very different. Um, honey barrels, uh, I know people always ask, ask for those, but the barrels can come from all different areas of the warehouse and, and that's what makes it so unique is people want to get their hands on that barrel and say, I got this from this location, this place, or if it's a bourbon society, um, any of those different and, places. And the story is really important to them sometimes too. Yep. You know, getting people together and going through those picks together. I mean, like oh, we, yeah. we, were, we were sharing some stories of picks that we've done together. Yep. And when it being really cold or really warm outside or <laughs> or the people who are with you and the mood that they're in whether they're pre-gaming oh, yeah. or what i mean it's, and, it's a lot and of fun. that's kind of the unique thing for us I mean, we always go out to to, to warehouse k on, on the claremont property and if you come in january you're kind of out there freezing to death you're outside but you got the bourbon to warm you up and then also if you come in july it's, it's hot you're sweating you're still drinking bourbon but people still have a good time i don't think i've ever met anyone that's had a bad time doing a single barrel at claremont or anywhere i mean people you're, you're drinking you're having a good time you're with your friends um, and sometimes coworkers, but at the end of the day, we're, we're all working. <laughs> yep. So you guys have two or three million barrels in inventory, right? Of whiskey, of, across Jim Beam. How do you find the ones that are gonna pass muster for the Knob Creek? <laughs> so that's, uh, that's kind of the, the, the tough thing, but back to the kind of QC lab, as long as the barrels are of nine years old, we're gonna pull them and start tasting them and uh, testing them. So we'll pull, pull a small sample, we'll take it to the QC lab. If it passes proof and passes the sensory, then it's gonna to come to, to, to the single barrel program. Hadn't made the um, cut yet, but it's got a, it's, it, it's got a lot of testing to go. It, yeah. Exactly, so kind of going on the background of that, but people come through and taste it. Um, years and years ago when the program was much smaller, uh, we didn't actually do any QC background on it. So that was kind of the, one of the cool and very unique things is once they got the barrel, it passed proof and volume, and then the barrel just came on through and then it would make its way out to market for, for selection. So if it tasted funky or smelt weird or something totally different, some people absolutely love that. Like it doesn't even taste like Knob Creek almost and people <laughs> loved it and ate it up. That's a good point though. I mean, that, <laughs> that so much of single barrel is subjective, right? I mean, right, like, right. Absolutely. Like that, that when you're tasting, you're zeroing in and that hyper focus on one barrel, you know, what speaks to you isn't necessarily what speaks to me, but you know, it, it's definitely true. We've all had those barrels that are just like, you know, the clouds part and it's right. like, oh, you know, <laughs> and, and then there's other barrels that are that are good, you know, because of the quality standards yeah. that that we have to implement. But they just they don't have that same kind of uh, zinc to them. cocktails. Right. But that moment for me, <laughs> you know, could happen in a barrel that doesn't happen for you. Exactly. And, and you know, exactly. to, to yep. Grant's point, you know, it, I think it's it's an interesting uh, to listen to like retailer strategies for what oh. they're looking for to pick because some retailers want something different that nobody else has. Absolutely. And other retailers, they want something that's pretty standard, pretty safe, yep. fits a profile, you know, and so there, there's all kinds of different strategies. So, they, so I've done that experience. We go, we taste, there's so, you know multiple barrels, that's what we're taking home. What happens with the retailer in your experience? Do, do, 
Do you, I mean, do they ever get to choose a single barrel, even though, a single, single barrel in this case? Because everything you do is single barrel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so they're- a Singled out single barrel to uh, kind of play Daffy Duck. Oftentimes, <laughs> and I'm, I, I think this is gonna answer your question, but oftentimes when I'm out in the market, you know, I'm in a city and, and I, I go to restaurants that have barrel picks of Blanton's or stores that have barrel picks of Blanton's. And what I've found is the single barrel select program Blanton's that that have been chosen are often some of my favorite barrels just because I feel like you have that extra layer of scrutiny that goes into it so you know especially if it's a, a restaurant group or a bar that that I, I love their menu I love their selection I'm probably gonna have similar taste in whiskey for them so huh. at at Buffalo Trace it's gone through you know the rigors of, of their selection process and then you have another group that's applying this this additional layer of their own scrutiny to it and, and so oftentimes I find that those are some of the the better tasting barrels that you huh. can come across yeah this bourbon carries on the legacies of Colonel Blanton and Elmer T Lee two of the most influential men in the history of bourbon. Blanton's is a bourbon that was made to be bold, to stand out from the crowd. Decades ago, Blanton's changed the bourbon industry. Today, it is a bourbon icon and still one of the finest in the world. We are more than just a general contractor. From land acquisition and development to self-performing trades like design and engineering, site, concrete, masonry, steel fabrication, steel erection and hardscapes, building repairs and maintenance, warehouse remediation, fall protection inspections and installations, and K-Rax Premium Spirits Barrel Storage Systems. We work together. Four divisions, three generations, one team. We are Cutter. So you said a second ago that this thing has just gone crazy, single barrels. Do you think Elmer T. Lee would have ever just it, had any idea that it would go Man. this crazy. He only died a few years ago, but. What a great question. Yeah. I, you know, I, in my heart of hearts, I think Elmer knew. I really do. He, he was a very wise man and he definitely knew his whiskey through and through. <laughs> um, and, you know, going back to 84 when Elmer was tasked with, you know, creating the super premium category of bourbon, um, he said, you know what? I know exactly where the best barrels in the distillery are, is where Colonel Blanton used to pick his from. So I'm gonna go to Colonel Blanton's Honey Hole in Warehouse H, and we're gonna use those barrels. And Colonel Blanton bottled his one barrel at a time, so I'm gonna bottle mine one, one barrel at a time. And through that, you know, Elmer's mission was to show the world how good bourbon could be. And especially thinking back to the 80s, you know, into the 70s, early 80s, Bourbon wasn't thought of the way that it's thought of right. now. You know, right. it was cowboy whiskey. It was what your grandfather drank. It, it wasn't necessarily cool to drink bourbon, but Elmer knew how good bourbon could be and he wanted to share that. And so I don't think Elmer would be surprised at, at where the brand is. And, and for that matter, I don't think Colonel Blanton would be that surprised either. Is it, that's, he's pulled a couple for himself each year, right? Or to, to pass bottles off the Exclusively to for yeah. himself, pretty nice. much. I mean, yeah. He, he was the owner, he could do that. <laughs> exactly, it's good to be the king, right? Right. <laughs> Grant, yeah. now, now well, it's still one of my favorite whiskey makers ever, Booker No, was not yep. a fan of single barrels, right? It, exactly, and that's exactly what I was gonna bring up next. So when Knob Creek finally launched uh, back in 1992, it's crazy it's already been that long, uh, but Booker was always a fan of consistency. He wanted consistent mm -hmm. bourbon. He wasn't a huge fan of that single barrel. Barrel by barrel would be very different. He wanted that consistency, hence why Booker's being barrel strength, but, but actually batched. Um, so when, when the single barrel came out, I'm sure Booker would still be very proud of the way single barrel has come. I mean, like I said, it's grown exponentially over the years, but that's kind of the uniqueness of single barrel. It's kind of like a, almost a double-edged sword. It's very unique uh, on its own end uh, because you're picking something that's kind of a one of a kind, but kind of the downfall is you're never gonna find that same barrel again. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll definitely find some similarities of the flavor profile mm -hmm. and all that from it, but it's just one of those things, that it's just a one-off. And I think to me, that's what's so very cool and very unique about the bourbon is you find this one barrel and you just go crazy about it. And then you you tell everyone by, by word of mouth how, how awesome it is and how, how great it is, so. That's very, really well said, I, I agree 100%, yeah. I, I've been on some picks where some good arguments break out. It, it, it tells <laughs> oh, some good oh, yeah. stories. People are just like, uh, no, no, that, that number three is uh, the one I want, not that number one. 
Uh, have you seen some? Uh, oh, oh yeah, we any, get. I mean, daggers. Every group we get out there is completely different. Uh, we have people that. I mean, if you have five people, they'll be two and two. Then you have the deciding vote. Or we have a group of four people, and it's two and two, and they're just button heads against each other. Like I like this one, but we like this one. And I've seen paper rock scissors uh, get an intense game. Um, they, they even bring me into it. Like, what's your favorite? And I'm like, don't, 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 don't put this on me. I don't want to be that person. But uh, but no, it, it is very amazing. Uh, sometimes we'll do a blind tasting. We'll pour up two two small samples, and then they'll go from there and then choose. But it's pretty incredible. People get into it for sure. Yeah, yeah, and everybody's got their opinion. And... Oh, absolutely. <laughs> what what's, what's the risk of again? Um, for your program where you bring out barrels, I, I guess the answer is you, you already taste them ahead of time. Make sure they're not they're not so far off Knob Creek that you wouldn't represent it. But I, I've tasted barrels that it's a little Knob Creek here or a little Four Roses here and the rest is weird and it's like, I still want that barrel. Do you get people that fight for that? Or you probably, you've vetted those barrels before they've come out. Sometimes, so that's kind of the, the process that we've kind of uh, adopted the last couple of years. Uh, but years and years ago, back in probably 2014 and 15, uh, that wasn't necessarily the process. We would have three barrels rolled out in Warehouse K. Uh, none of them have been kind of going through the sensory process because we want to be able to give you a unique, a very different barrel that could be totally off the taste profile from, from, from Knob Creek. So when they come out and taste the barrels, I had an example, this was a couple years ago, we had a, a group, I believe from Tennessee, uh, they came in and tasted a barrel and they just were just blown away by it. It didn't taste anything like Knob Creek, just something so rare and unique. And they're like, we want this one because it's so different and, we don't, and it doesn't taste like Knob Creek. And we've had barrels that just smell very strange and weird, but when people come through, they, they want that barrel because it's so funky and different. Mm -hmm. And that's what mm -hmm. really gets them and they just go crazy over it. But we have barrels, three barrels lined up. We taste through each one. Uh, the two barrels that they do not choose will just kind of go back into circulation until someone eventually uh, selects it. So we could have a group be like, I, I don't really care for this barrel. And then the group we have that afternoon the next day be like, this is the best barrel ever. And it's like, really? The group this morning or yesterday <laughs> didn't care too much for it. So it just goes to show it's all subjective. Every group is just absolutely, totally different. And I I mean, it just it blows my mind every time, too. Yeah, and thank goodness we all taste <laughs> different. Yeah, right? yeah, makes I it mean, fun. yeah exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd have one bourbon, you know. We'd all be drinking the same thing. So what's the standard deviation for you guys? Where, 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 how much, so if, if this is the Blanton's line, how much funkiness or over-the-topness do you allow? So the, the, the standard is based on, like I mentioned before, a, a previously bottled version of Blanton's. They're not putting any barrels in front of people that haven't already met that standard. Um, but, you know, to Grant's point, some of the same stuff happens. I mean, there's definitely variation from, from barrel to barrel. Um, you know, in, in terms of does it go down the line or does it get made into a Blanton's? That's really kind of a call that's made on the, the sensory lab mm -hmm. level um, from a quality. And then from there, it's, you know, take your pick, guys. Take Whatever your chances. Whatever you like, yeah. <laughs> what do you make of the cult following this, that this has gained now. Because we talked about this a year ago and it's gone crazier since. Well, it's 11 months, I think, since we last talked yeah. about it. That's nuts. I mean, Justin's House of Bourbon, one of the big jokes is they could call it Justin's House of Blanton's because that's a people, <laughs> they say 50% of all the calls that come in are for Blanton's. I, I believe it. I mean, it, it, look, it's tremendous. It's, it's great for bourbon. It's, um, it's, good, it's good for us, for sure. Um, we're just, kind of thrilled that the secret has been so well received, right? I mean, it seems like it's something that, you know, when Blanton's first came out in the, you know, mid 80s, it sat on shelves, it collected dust, even going into the 90s, you know, bottles were three or four times higher than anything else on the shelf and and so it's like neglected children i yeah, mean you just look back and you're sad we've come 180 you know yeah. between now and then <laughs> and, and so i i think you know the the real the best that i can at least figure is that the the cat's out of the bag you know the the secret's out and and enough people have had shared experiences with this bourbon to be able to tell one each other like if you see that it's reliably good time and time again. And, Grab it. And you know, Blends gets a lot of attention because it's a unique shaped bottle. And you know, we have the horse stopper on top that folks like to collect because you know, each letter on here is a different letter that spells out Blanton's. But at the end of the day, I don't think that it's any secret if what's in the inside of the bottle 
doesn't make you smile, you're not gonna get it again. And so I think sure. that's the real story behind the success of Blanton's is that you know Harlan Wheatley and his team and Elmer and his team have been able to create this this bourbon that it's just exceptional over and over and over again. Now you guys gained some of your notoriety first overseas, is that correct? Blanton's did? Or, or did did it yeah. start here first? Am I wrong? So so as I mentioned, you know, mid eighties into the nineties, Blanton sat on store shelves here and um, actually there was so they said, send him over, send him overseas. Well, the well, buying him the here. The way that the, the story <laughs> has been told to me is that through the Toyota dealership, there was a lot of Japanese gentlemen that were doing business in Kentucky. For those who might not know, uh, Toyota has a plant in Georgetown, in Georgetown which is basically yeah. the heart of bourbon country. Which is 15 miles from the distillery. I mean, they're very close to each other. So, so these Japanese businessmen would bring back a bottle of bourbon to their colleagues or family or friends when they would come do business here in Kentucky, take it back to Japan. And, and so there became this, this organic demand that was growing in Japan. And the whole Blanton's project almost went under because it wasn't selling here. And wow. so we looked to Japan to really save Blanton's at a time where it, it wasn't selling here at home. So, so definitely, you know, that, that international part of Blanton's is an important part of the story. And, and I think oftentimes probably, you know, the, the Japanese in particular don't get enough credit for their influence on where we are in bourbon today. I mean, I think it's very true. And, and, you know, this does kind of have that sort of scotch profile in, in the sense of the mouthfeel and the softness and it's not a big punch in the face, which yeah, I mean yeah. it's um, which I like too. But. Definitely, <laughs> like you know, in the UK or or Europe, you know, that is Scotch is king, of course. Um, and uh, more often than not, when we have folks that are akin to that Scotch palate try this, they'll be pleasantly surprised at at Blanton's approachability and you know. It's um, it's not very aggressive, but it still has some spice. It, it's got, it's got that sweetness to it. So there's just there's a lot of things for people to find that they enjoy about it, for sure. And, and speaking of punch in the face, that's one of the beauties of Knob <laughs> Creek. I, I, I love that. It's a very assertive, aggressive whiskey. Absolutely. With, with Knob Creek single rail being bottled at 120 proof, it'll it'll definitely uh, pack pack a punch to it, and it basically hits you in the face. Uh, but it, it's got tons of flavor, that high proof. We wanted to make it close to barrel strength as possible, but being nine years old and 120 proof, it's not quite barrel strength, but at, uh, and back to people coming on site and buying their own and purchasing their own barrel, some people like to get it right at 121, 122 proof, so you're not adding as much water down to it. Well, we've had barrels I've seen 145, 146, and lowering that down to 120 proof. It could really affect the, the amount of water that you, that you throw back in there. It could really change things, or it could help out. It just depends on sure. the complexity of the liquid and how, how that bourbon ages in there. But yeah, the, the 120 proof, if you're not ready for it, it'll... Woof. Exactly. Woof. It'll, <laughs> it'll get you. Um, but and, and but we it, also, it just depends. You know, like I was telling you that I opened a 14-year-old Knob oh, yeah. Creek last Friday, and the nose is incredible, and the, and the on the palate it was pretty pronounced and announced. Just walked away, left it alone for a half an hour yeah. or so, <laughs> calmed down, got its it manners together, up. buttoned its shirt up, and yep. it was ready to go. Yep. Is and that is that the audience that maybe you guys are after, <laughs> or, or the people who are looking for that aggressive it's, presentation? It, it, it's a little bit of both. Uh, we do get a lot of repeat customers, so of course Kentucky being our, our largest market, on-premise and off-premise, uh, we get people from all over the state. I mean, we're definitely nationwide not in all 50 states, but I, I think people that are different accounts are looking for that. They're looking for the, the pack of punch. They definitely know what they're getting from it. But we also get brand new customers that have never purchased an Knob Creek single barrel before, and they kind of know the drill that it's 120 proof, so we allow them to taste at barrel strength, so we give them that idea if it's 125 proof, uh, taste it first with no water, and then go back through and add a little bit of water, because mm -hmm. that will make a difference when you do lower it down to that 120 proof. It's it on fire for me. When oh, I add water. absolutely, but sure it, even from 125 proof to 120 proof, people are blown away at the difference of that. Yeah. The exact same liquid, mm -hmm. but just adding a couple of drops of water, it makes a tremendous difference. So, All you, right, well, we're gonna close with a simple question. Is, <laughs> is um, You've got the small batch collection, Basil Hayden, Snob Creek, Booker's, and Baker's. Mm -hmm. Baker's has gone to you know, new single barrels and all this fun mm -hmm. stuff. Anything new to expect out of that four 
brand package? It's uh, it's funny you bring sure. that up. <laughs> I'd sure love to see uh, a Basil Hayden's barrel proof, which I yep. got to taste last summer. So Angels sang. So I'm for you. Basil Hayden and ba uh, Booker's, uh, those are probably the two tougher ones to develop into single barrel. Um, but with that, so Knob Creek, of course, uh, Baker's with it moving from small batch to a single barrel. Uh, there is going to be coming a select program in the near future. Nice. I won't give out too many details, but uh, TBD. Uh, but Baker's is going to be moving. It's probably going to start off extremely, extremely small, extremely allocated until we kind of get our more inventory to come online to be able to expand. Uh, but, but Baker's is, is on the horizon and it should be should be soon. That's cool. <laughs> so what about Blanton's? Just playing catch up? That's the future? <laughs> yeah, beat well, that horse. For catch sure. Up. I mean, yeah, I'd, we're, we're rolling out more barrels than ever before. And, you know, part of that started many moons ago when the demand started increasing. Um, but thrilled to be able to say that we finally have caught up with our barrel inventory enough that beginning right now, actually, as an annual seasonal release going forward, we'll, we'll be doing Blanton's Gold here in the U.S. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, so look for that. Like Grant said, it, you know, very limited, you know, got to got to start somewhere. And, and so, you know, we've been listening to folks asking for it for a long time now. And um, and we're just thrilled that we're finally able able to roll that out. And so the next one on my list is straight from the barrel. So nice. we'll we'll see see what we can do there. Um, but but yeah, I mean, you know, the main thing for us is just maintaining the quality, not growing too fast, because, again, if what's in the bottle isn't the same as what people have known to love for so many years, then it's going to change. Yeah, yeah. So. so you've heard it right there, folks. Get your tents and your lounge chairs ready and prepare to camp out in front of some forlorn liquor store to get your Blantons, to get your Knob Creek. Either way, people, get these single barrel picks. They're fantastic. Aaron, thanks for coming, man. Grant, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Cheers to some of the best whiskeys Thanks, guys. made anywhere. Sit and sip with us and come back for more education. To single barrel. Single barrel.